Hi everyone, I'm John Page, and I'm starting with this paper napkin to be in my background. Why am I putting a paper napkin? A, well, because I like it and because it gives me instant details in the back. If you don't have a paper napkin, you can stamp, you can glue other things that I, you like. There is going to be a paint on top of it. I'm using it, as I said, because I like the details and also because I like when I glue down a paper napkin, the texture, the wrinkles that I get. I'm using white glue with a little bit of water. I don't have measurements. A white glue can vary in the consistency. I just add water until I like it. If you don't dilute the white uh, glue, then you will find that it will drag and tear your paper napkin. So water will, uh, is necessary to glue the paper napkin. Okay, so I've got a lot of glue here. Let's move it a little bit. And now I want to put my paper napkin on the page not really concerned about accuracy or anything just so it will cover most of the page so here we go and now it can get wrinkly wherever it wants to now i'm going on top and i'm going from the inside towards the outside and i'm using the flat of the brush with a lot of glue again i need this to slide otherwise it will just drag the paper napkin and it's a shame not that if there is a tear it's it would be horrible but if you can avoid tear tearing the napkin then it's better so as you can see i'm just going about it real quick covering everything with the glue of course the only downside of this is that i will have to wait a long time for all of it to dry there is a lot of glue here so as i said a lot of time to dry but re you really need all this glue so everything will be in place and you won't have air bubbles which are just annoying <laughs> okay so finished and afterwards when it's dry i'm planning on just coloring adding some a uh, color on top and we'll see i'll be back when it's dry Okay, so mostly dry <laughs> and I've got here some uh, acrylic paint, craft paint, I've got some uh, turquoise, uh, wild green, uh, oxide green, really doesn't matter, just went with greens <laughs> and I've got some gesso here. I'm going to add water to each of them, I want uh, this to push all the details back. Uh, to the back I don't need them to be so uh, prominent on the page and I'm just going to play with what I've got first I'm starting with the gesso again with water and if I think it's too opaque and uh, I'm just adding water now the white gesso will is a good primer and it will also uh, give me variation to the color once I will add the other colors so I'm going all over the page with this it will help pushing uh, the details backwards and also will give a same base for everything else now of course if you want to uh, mask areas that you don't want you can do more opaque like if i think my uh, focal image 
the main uh, event of this page is going to be in some place I can decide to put more white push back more of the details like if I think it will be here in the center I can add more wh white here and mask most of the details or you can just go around the page and do the same thing all over it so just need a little bit more of the gesso here and with whatever is left I'm going to do as I said just a little bit more here I don't really need this area to be so I've got here some gesso that I added water so I will I always have a more liquidy <laughs> gesso okay so I've got this now I'm dipping the same brush into the water and I'm going to start with the darker color and I'm doing it quite uh, lightly and if I will want more I can add more later on as you can see it's mixing with the gesso so I'm getting a more variation in the color I can always add like here if I want it darker here I can do some splattering while I'm at it <laughs> let's see moving to the, this turquoise with water again and I'm just spreading it randomly on the page the only thing that I'm trying to do is not get rid of, of the details just uh, pushing it back I want some of it to show through and if I think again if it's too much I'm just adding more water okay as you can see I've moved to the green color still trying to keep the details showing through and I'm letting all the paint just mix it's all wet so it's easy to to blend in between get more sh uh, shades in between and also I like how it goes on all the texture I have from the paper napkin now you don't have to use acrylics you can use anything water-based you can use sprays I could have done this page very quickly with just spraying some sprays I can use brushes. I can use even gelatos and activate them with a baby wipe it's up to you so anything watery that will go with all this uh, wrinkles and texture and will be translucent so you won't lose what you've got in the back okay I like it I am leaving it be I think just here it, it was a little bit too much so I'm adding some paint okay and again lots of time to dry lots of water here I'll be back and before <laughs> I'm forgetting you see all this don't waste it take a, a, any kind of paper paper printer paper notebook just smoosh uh, it on the notebook or whatever like I've got I'll move this and I will show you just because it's one of the things that I do 
Okay, here we go. No, I have something here. Let's pick a page with nothing. Here we go. Smooshing. Making a lot of mess, yes. But still got interesting results. So you will have a painty paper to work with. Using everything. Like so. And I'll... I still have paint, I can go, I have dictionary that I'm also always covering with excess paint. You can smoosh it, you can take a page and just wipe it off. Whatever you like to do. Here we go. Very interesting beginning to a page to a painty paper to collage paper and now you just need to clean after yourself i'll be back okay so it's not uh, dry yet but before it's getting dry i decided i want to do some splattering and it's on purpose wet on wet I went and got some, this is cranberry, some kind of dark paint, doesn't really matter, and I'm taking a fan brush with water, just adding water, and I want it to splatter it, and I want it to kind of mix with the background. That's why I'm working wet on wet. And if I need, I will spray it also with more water. So there will be some spreading. So you see how it spreads here? Not everywhere. So I'm just going to take some spray bottle. Now for this kind of... Uh, thing you need spray bottle that is more mist than a direct I don't know what to call it <laughs> direct stream okay now I like it maybe this area is too much so I'm taking a baby wipe and removing what I don't like and this is it that's my uh, my background now I really need to let this all dry. I'll be back. So, this is dry and I was already <laughs> prepared to start stenciling. This is the stencil that I want to use. And I've got here some gesso and makeup sponge. But then I was looking at it and decided that I want some more details to the background. I want some circles, I don't know why. So here are two, uh, I don't know if to call them stamps, but for that ma matter, they are stamps or mark making tools. These are made from a uh, thick craft foam. It's like five millimeter thick. And I cut it by hand and done the indentation. And I put some dark green here and some of the oxide green that I've used before. So I just want to stamp this on my page I'm just going to put some paint with my finger like so and I'm not looking for a precise print or anything I've got too much texture going uh, on here so I'm going to stamp this quite randomly on the page and whatever goes goes <laughs> So this is it, just smearing it like so. Moving to the smaller one, using the 
other color. Where do I want it? Let's put it here. If it won't show, then I will... Uh, no, it's good enough. If it uh, disappeared too much into the background, then I would have done this also in the darker green. Just playing and doing, putting it down quite randomly. And let's see. Just half of it here. I like when it's a uh, hanging off the page. Mm, do I want more? Maybe with the darker color. Well, it would be a little bit of a mix because I already have the lighter color, but that's okay. Now I'm just using the leftover and whatever prints, <laughs> prints. Okay, now I'm satisfied. Moving on. So that's the stencil that I want to use. And I'm quite messy. I'm putting it here. And I'm, as I said, using a makeup brush with gesso why am i using gesso because it's more opaque and it has a more a chalky finish you can use white acrylic paint even with the gesso i would probably need a more than one coat especially that i have texture in the back so this is going to take quite some time i'm just showing you the beginning and then I'll go off camera and finish stenciling all of this stencil probably do a second layer so it would be more opaque I'll be back finished stenciling now I'm going to work on the image I'm taking a brush with the gesso and a little bit of water just so it would be more uh, I don't know <laughs> more fluid for that matter what happened to my uh, <laughs> brush and I'm just connecting the branch because uh, the stencil has to uh, you have to break it into shapes otherwise you can't have a stencil so i'm now just <coughs> sorry <coughs> connecting uh, the pieces not all of them just what i think it will be more uh, visible i don't know so i'm doing this and then I'm going to start coloring at some color. I'm not leaving it white. I'm thinking about doing some a contour line. We'll see as I go. First, I'm going to put some paint and we'll see. Even this, there are several ways to go about it because you have the gesso and it's a good primer. You can even color with felt pens just regular uh, felt markers that anyone can uh, get uh, their hands on and you can also uh, make a watercolor effect because uh, they are reactive with water you can color and 
then activate them with water so let's see I think that's enough I maybe I I hope I haven't missed anything but doesn't seem so okay so I've got this now I want to start with the stem and I'm thinking I've got all kinds of acrylic fans so I'm thinking of using them I've got some brown that let's see how it looks I don't like it <laughs> I can cover it I can <laughs> but now it it looks nice so maybe <laughs> you see who knew I can put some color and then dip into the gesso and smear it and now I like it so just a hint from the acrylic marker and I don't have a, a brand for you it's something I've picked I think uh, on Aliexpress all kinds of acrylic markers out there and I'm sorry to say I don't really like the Posca pens I have several of them but they are most of the time they are just giving me trouble so I don't use them very often okay so that's nice all kinds of ways to go about everything it doesn't have to be the expensive stuff okay moving on I'm thinking maybe to add a hint of green to the stem This is just the coloring I'm still going to work on I think some kind of contour line maybe not a contour line and go over and do some shading I'm not sure yet as I said this is just the beginning let's see about the, the green just a hint in several places especially towards the flower and here I missed this stem okay So once again, <laughs> just activating this acrylic pens. I could have also used just the acrylic color that I have here, but it seems to me this is a little bit quicker I don't know <laughs> maybe I will uh, cover everything later on who knows okay flowers I really like the flowers uh, to be mostly white but I want to give them a little bit uh, of hint from the same pinkish uh, flower <laughs> 
color <laughs> that I uh, used when I uh, splattered the back and now I'm just adding water and spreading it more water when I wanted to fade into the white so it only at the base of each petal I'm putting this and using lots of water okay so I'm going to continue doing this on all the flowers and I'll be back okay so <laughs> I worked a lot of time on this off camera and I'm still not satisfied I'm now going to uh, dip into the dark green with again water and I'm thinking of going around my focal image and just making it a little bit darker don't know why I just need it to be more a uh, visible on the page it's not an exact science and there are all kinds of uh, things I can also do but I didn't want to do the control line I just want to add some more paint and in the hopes that this will make it stand out more on the page I've got lots of details that I didn't want to lose but I still need to find the balance between the details in the back that I don't want to, le to lose and my focal image that I need to stand out more on the page so I'm just going around with darker color and let's hope for the best I'm not getting into all the spaces just mostly around the um, basic shape <laughs> mostly around my focal image and I'm with lots of water I'm blending it letting it blend into the back so I won't have harsh lines and when you are what using things that with lots of water it's easier to do this I'm only using the acrylic paints because they are more accessible you can use watercolors if you want or all kinds of inks can also work so once again this is going to take some time what can I say but it's worth it so I'm just going around and I'll be back okay so <laughs> another a uh, task that took a lot of time but I'm finally satisfied with what I've got I don't know if you can see all the details I really like that I took the time and done all of it so this is it thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments down below I'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now